If you look at New York State on Google Maps, you will immediately notice these strange long lakes in upstate New York. These 11 lakes are known as the Finger Lakes, and from west to east, they are named Conesus, Hemlock, Canadice, Honeyoy, Canandaigua, Cayuca, Seneca, Cayuga, Owasco, Scaniatlas, and Otisco. And today, all of these lakes are part of the Lake Ontario watershed. The western four lakes flow into the Genesee River, while the other seven lakes flow into the Oswego River. However, this was actually not always the case. And so today, let's talk about the geology of these Finger Lakes and how they formed so elongated. So the geologic history of these Finger Lakes here starts all the way back around 360 million years ago. And during this time in North America, there was a mountain building event named the Acadian Orogeny. And this orogeny was the third out of the four major orogenies that built the Appalachian Mountains of today. And it occurred when the Avalonian microcontinent, which is this region that you can see on the map here, smashed into the North American continent, uplifting a lot of the Appalachian region of today. And over many millions of years, these Acadian mountains would get heavily eroded away and sent a bunch of their sediment into the Kaskaskia Sea here. And it was these sediments that make up the bedrock of this Finger Lakes region today. When the sediments went into the sea, they got heavily compressed down into sandstones, limestones, and shales. And today, you can see a lot of this bedrock in the Finger Lakes region. For example, this is Buttermilk Falls State Park just south of Ithaca, New York. But then, after the Acadian orogeny, around 325 million years ago, the continent of Gondwana collided with the continent of Russia and created the Alleghenian orogeny, a much larger and more violent orogeny, which formed the bulk of the Appalachian Mountains that we can see today. And this violent orogeny is what caused modern-day New York to get uplifted and go from being a sea to being far inland around 290 million years ago. And one aspect of this uplift that is very important to our story are the rivers that formed around our Finger Lakes region during this time. So this is around 300 million years ago when the Kaskaskia Sea was still closing. And as you can see by this map, there were streams that were going west into the ever-closing sea. However, as time went on and the Kaskaskia Sea completely closed, these rivers changed which direction they were flowing in. More specifically, at this time, the lakes were roughly split in half into where they actually flowed. The lakes west of Seneca Lake eventually flowed into the Susquehanna River. This is because these western lakes here were able to flow into the Cahokton River here, and this river would eventually flow into the Shemung and later the Susquehanna River. And interestingly, the Susquehanna River actually cuts through the mountains in this area because the Susquehanna River is older than this uplift. But for more information on this, I have another video, so the link will be at the top right or in the description below. However, at the same time, these eastern lakes flowed north, and this is because they are much further away from the Susquehanna River Basin. And during this time around 200 million years ago, the Great Lakes obviously didn't exist because they were filled in by glaciers. However, there was a large river system known as the Laurentian River that flowed largely where modern Great Lakes are today. And as you can see on this map, this is where these eastern lakes flowed into. And over the next 200 million years, these rivers and streams will get the chance to erode deep valleys into this bedrock here. Especially because, as I mentioned previously, the bedrock is made of sandstones, limestones, and shales, which erode very easily. And like all rivers that erode down a landscape, the valleys that these rivers would have caused were V-shaped. So as you can see by this diagram, there are deep V-shaped valleys. However, everything changed during the Pleistocene, or the Ice Age. During this time, the Laurentide Ice Sheet moved south over these river valleys. And what this did is cause the river valleys to be deepened and widened drastically. And it also changed the shape of these river valleys as well. So as I mentioned previously, when rivers erode a landscape, they formed V-shaped valleys. However, when the glaciers moved in, their immense weight and size caused a different U-shaped valley. 
So when glaciers move into these valleys, they scrape away a lot of the edges of these hills, and then also carve a deep U-shape because of their weight. And this process is known as glacial scouring. And so if we look at the Finger Lakes region today, we can see evidence of this glacial scouring. For example, if we look south of Lake Canandaigua here, you can see the path that these glaciers carved through these river valleys. And you can see how these glaciers made the river valley much wider than the actual stream that flows through it today, and how it deposited a lot of sediment that the river currently sits on. In fact, this immense amount of glacial till that it deposited is the exact reason why these western lakes here no longer flow into the Susquehanna River. As you can see by this map, as the last glacial maximum was ending around 10,000 years ago, the glaciers deposited a lot of the till they have picked up at the ends of these valleys, essentially blocking them off from flowing the other direction. And this glacial moraine becomes very apparent if we look at a topographic map of this region. You can see how this lower elevation region looks like it should continue eastward and then southwards down this valley. However, it doesn't, and there seems to be an abrupt elevation increase over here. And this is because the glaciers deposited their sediments into this valley and prevented these western lakes from flowing south. And at the same time, there was the large glacier which prevented the northward flow of the other lakes. And so this combination of the glacial moraine and the glacier to the north left the water that was trying to flow out of these U-shaped valleys with nowhere to go, and so they built up into these lakes that we can see today. And eventually, the glaciers retreated even more to the north and left all of the Finger Lakes to flow north into Lake Ontario as we can see it today. And so, to recap, the 11 Finger Lakes of New York have their geologic origin in an ancient sea, which got filled with sediment, and that became the bedrock of this region. And because this bedrock was easy to erode, once this rock got uplifted, many different river valleys formed in this area, some flowing south into the Susquehanna, and the other ones flowing north into the Laurentian River system. However, then the glaciers moved in and caused these V-shaped river valleys to turn into deep U-shaped river valleys. And it also trapped the water that was getting into these rivers, so they built up into the lakes we can see them today. And I just think it's really interesting how you can see these glacial valleys on Google Maps today. But that is going to be all for today's video. If you learned something new, please subscribe, and if you have any video suggestions, please comment them below. And I will see you guys in the next video.